Hi everyone, um, just wanted to share something because with all the heaviness that's going on right now, especially in America, I've heard a lot of people in the UK saying, oh yeah, it's really bad in America, it's, it's not, it's not like that in the UK, but I wanted to share an experience I had because it's been stirred up so much with everything that's going on this week. Um, a few years ago, me and my dad were on a high street in London, it was somewhere in Chelsea, um, and at the time my management company was, I think it was in Fulham, so we were walking around the area and I just had a meeting with my management and I just bought a new place and I wanted to get some like bits and pieces for it and we saw this cute little sh um, shop that we went into and um, we were looking around and there were other customers in there. I didn't realize at the time, but all of the customers were white. Me and my dad were the only black people in there. So we're looking around, picking up stuff as you usually do in a store. And I started to notice that the lady store owner was kind of hovering around and being, her, her vibe was just off. And um, eventually she came up to my dad and I and said, you need to put that down. You need to put that stuff down. You, you're not allowed to touch it. And me and my dad were just confused. We looked around because every other person was picking stuff up, looking at it, you know. And I immediately knew what was happening and I said to her, well, why? Everyone else is picking up stuff. Why do we have to put stuff down? I'm just looking at it. I'm gonna probably buy it. She's like, no, you just need to put it down. Put it down now. And she became really confrontational with us. Now I could see people in the store, like I said, it was a lot of white people and they were looking and kind of like whispering under their breaths and they started leaving the store. And I became confrontational because obviously it sparked like this rage in me as to why we're being singled out and targeted. And I started saying, no, I'm not putting it down. Like, I'm, I'm gonna buy it. Why, why are you targeting us? And um, again, it became confrontational. So everyone in the store by that time was, was leaving and had left, um, just kind of, you know, just kind of disgusted and they left. So it was me, this woman, and my dad in the store and now that everyone had left she became really defensive got really agitated and ran behind the counter and um said i'm calling the police on you you need to get out of my store now and i just became so enraged and i remember my dad who is like the most lovable big black guy he was trying to calm me down and and I, w I couldn't calm down, I was so angry. I knew what this woman was doing to us. But my dad has been in positions like this before. Um, same as me, but in a different way. And he, you know, he knew that I need to make myself smaller and I need to make myself, you know, calm and not be. And that just enraged me even more. Anyway, he managed to get me to leave the store and I, I left and I sat in the car. Actually, before I left, I said, I'm gonna call the police on you because you're discriminating against us. Um, anyway, I left and I sat in the car that was parked uh, around the corner from the store and um, I sat in there and I just sobbed, I absolutely sobbed. And my dad came out and he grabbed something from the car and then he went back into the store and I was like, well, what? what is he he grabbed a cd i was like what is he doing it was my cd my music cd he went back into the store and he came out like five minutes later and I, there was a knock on the window and i was like you know like hyperventilating i was so angry and the woman was in the car uh, at the side of the car and she knocked and she said i'm so so sorry i'm so sorry i didn't know who you were and that just kind of, my heart kind of sank. And obviously, you know, I'd won the biggest show in the UK like a few years earlier. So she didn't recognize me because I'm just in my normal clothes. Like maybe I was in, 
you know, whatever, my normal clothes, just doing my thing and she didn't recognize me. Um, and I confronted her and said, you're racist, you're a racist. You targeted me and my dad. You wanted to throw us out of the store because of our color, like you're racist. And she was kind of in denial. She was kind of like, I could just see her spinning. And she was very like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not. I just, I just got scared, you know, and I thought you might, you were gonna take something. And I'm like, that is the conditioning that we have. That is racism. Like this conditioning that we were gonna take something, black people, oh, they're gonna steal something or there's something to be scared of or people with darker skin tones are, you know, not, they're gonna do something bad. You know, it's this conditioning that we have. So when people in the UK are saying, no, we don't really, you know, that's, it's not something that we have here. It's not really a problem here. It is a problem. It's a big problem. And, you know, I just wish that the people in the store, that the white people in the store that all left, they left out of disgust because they knew something, they knew it was wrong and they left, but they didn't say anything. And because they didn't say anything, the situation escalated. So we were left on our own with this woman in the store who became more agitated and felt like people were leaving because my dad and I were disrupting the peace. No, they were leaving because they were disgusted at this woman's behavior, but they didn't say anything. So for the people that are not speaking out or not saying anything, like you're the people that left you, you just left, you, you kind of, oh, it's disgusting, but it's gonna disrupt my day too much to really get involved and really stand by their side and say, hey, what are you doing? Why are you targeting them? This is wrong. So when I see messaging of, you know, don't say, don't stay silent, say something, say something, it's real. You need to say something. You need to stand with us and you need to acknowledge that it's happening because when you don't acknowledge that it's happening, you're diminishing the pain and you're diminishing our humanity. And especially in the UK, you know, there are a lot of areas where there are white areas and, and, and you could feel maybe that, you know, you're in this bubble and this is not happening, but I come to, the areas where there's predominantly black populations, ethnic minorities, come to those areas. I, I dare you, come to those areas and see. You'll see, it's underfunded. There's lack of resources. You know, I grew up in Hackney. I grew up in a predominantly black area. It was underfunded. This is the reality of what's happening. And you know, it's sometimes, for me, that's why I, I, my refuge is music. And I'm a singer, I'm a musician, and that's my refuge, always. And sometimes I feel like maybe I can't articulate myself properly when I'm just talking. But obviously in this circumstance, I have to, I have to, I have to speak about it. And I hope it's coming across how I need it to come across. Because I'm just, in pain and I'm tired and I'm sick of it. Um, and you know, I'm someone who's mixed race. My mum is white, my dad is black. And I had a beautiful representation of what that unity meant for me. Because it, when that is, when that comes together in the most loving way, it is the most beautiful thing equal and beautiful, but that's not the reality of what's going on. <sighs> yeah, so I just wanted to share that.